once again to a Randy Aid. Donated some blood, got a t-shirt, I'm going to keep this production train rolling today. Today we're going to be talking about feeding. A little bit of a disclaimer first. This is not going to be another feeding video. There are a million of those on YouTube. If that's what you want, go search for feeding video. We will see a couple spiders eat today, yes, but I will be talking primarily about how to feed them, the do's and don'ts. So, grab a pencil and pen if you want to take notes. Let's get going. As usual, everything in this video is mostly experience-based. Take what you will from it. Your mileage may vary. First things first, we're going to go over some general rules to keep in mind when you are feeding. As I said last time, always have a catch cup nearby. These things tend to bolt, especially when they're hungry, which is probably why you're feeding them. Personal rule of mine is to always know where the tarantula is before opening the enclosure. Pretty easy on the big ones. With the little ones, sometimes you got to lift up and see where they are. You don't want them on the lid when you go to open it. That's a bad look. Hopefully this one goes without saying, but don't leave an opened cage unattended. And lastly, probably the most important one, understand the spider that you're dealing with. Is it venomous? Is it skittish? Is it fast? Is it one to kick hairs? Be aware of what you're dealing with at that moment. Keep that in mind. As a last general note, do know where all of your children, other pets, are in the household. You don't want a dog sticking their face in a spider that can kick hair, and you don't want a child reaching and grabbing the spider. I prefer to do it with a closed door. We're going to be talking about four major types of spider. The arboreal slings, the arboreal juvenile subadults, adults, and of course terrestrial slings and terrestrial subadults, adults, what have you. We're going to be going over tips for each group. We're going to be starting with the arboreal slings. As you can imagine, being an arboreal sling, they are prone to climb up. That's where they live in the wild, in the trees. That being said, you may have a jack-in-the-box behavior. Jack-in-the-box is when you open a lid, they get scared, and they jump right out. With that being said, that rule that I said before of always knowing where the spider is, probably most important on this group. In terms of actually feeding this group, you're going to want to drop the prey item right in front of their little web tube maybe actually put their prey item on the webbing that they've created somewhere that will be easier for them to find. Personally, with all of my slings, especially the arboreals, I like to pre-kill the prey. Crush the head, cut them in half, whatever. This, number one, makes it easy to remove uneaten prey if they decide that they're not hungry, and two, makes you actually get to see them take down the prey. As I mentioned before, feeding is fun. We want to watch it. That's how you're going to be able to do it. Next up are the terrestrial slings. These are very easy. Crush the head, cut them in half, whichever one you want to do, drop them in there and they will find them eventually. That's really all you need to do with them. I do want to note on both slings, terrestrials and arboreals, they are scavengers. Unlike their adult counterparts, slings will eat dead prey. That's why I keep mentioning, hey, no problem in killing them. What I usually do Put the prey in there. If they don't take it down immediately, leave it overnight. If it's still there in the morning, pluck it out. Otherwise, you're good to go. Now we're going to talk about arboreal juvies, subadults, and adults. They're all pretty much the same, so I'm just going to lump all of these together. First things first, they are way faster than you. Don't ever think that you can catch a spider as it's running. It's not going to happen. It is not uncommon to call these things teleporters. They're fast. If you have a particularly skittish one, one that's prone to escaping, bolting out of its cage, I have two methods to avoid such a catastrophe. The one that I personally use, I have a big empty floor space, put the cage square in the middle of it, have a catch cup nearby, and do what you need to do. Clean out the cage, feed them whatever you need to do that you need to open their cage. Neat little trick. The next one I have never personally tried, but I found it out on the forums by a user by the name of Poic54, so thank you for that tip. Get yourself a bar stool or some similar chair, put the cage on there, and then do your business. This accomplishes the same thing that I was referring to before with a large open area, but it goes one step further in making it a much longer trip from the cage to the wall and then your ceiling if it does indeed get out. Before actually opening the enclosure, make sure you know where the spider is. Are you seeing a pattern here? 
You don't need any surprises with a very venomous spider. Arboreals tend to have a hot bite, meaning it's going to hurt. It can send you to the hospital with some of these species, so be careful. Most arboreals are actually great hunters, so they don't need a whole lot of help. That being said, I usually don't crush the heads or cut the roaches or any of that when I'm feeding my older arboreals. I tend to just drop it in there, close up the cage as quickly as I can because I don't want it open, and then let them do their thing. They will actually chase down prey, and it's pretty fun to watch. Enough for the terrestrials. These are once again pretty easy to feed, drop in the prey, and they'll take it down. No real warnings here, other than the typical that I keep talking about, know where the spider is, know what you're dealing with but terrestrials are pretty easy to feed. So now here are some final thoughts to keep in mind when you are feeding. As I said last video, if you are feeding any of the worms, waxworms, mealworms, that kind of thing, always crush the heads, adults or juveniles or slings, it doesn't matter. Again, these things can bite back, and if you don't crush the heads, they will immediately burrow into the substrate, which you do not want. It can hurt your spider. If you want more information, watch the last video. Something similar can be said for crickets. Do not have a live cricket in the spider enclosure for extended periods of time, especially if you think that your spider is in pre-molt. The reason for that is if a tarantula begins to molt with a cricket in there, the cricket is able to eat the spider, or at least take a chunk out of it, and the spider will die from that injury. Some spiders are pretty shy eaters. I have one that I haven't seen eat ever, but it takes food in the middle of the night. I just have to leave the roach in there. So there's a balancing act to be had here. I just said don't leave crickets in there for extended periods of time, but at the same time I just said I left them in there overnight. You need to read your spiders. If you think that there's even a chance that the spider is in pre-molt, do not leave feeders in there overnight. I only leave feeders in there overnight if I know for a fact it's not going to molt. And that is it for this video. Once again, check out arachnoboards.com. My name is Oilers K. This has been Aranier, and I will see you next time.